very good afternoon to you all. What a wonderful way to start today's sunset safari. Yes, there may not be much of a sunset at all, but that's okay because we are out and about with you. It's grey skies and it's windy, but the animals are here. And we're sitting at one of the water bodies called Gowrie Dam admiring the water buck. Nelly, you are excited about this afternoon's bumble. Me too. I'm going to go to the lions, the Talamati breakaways. We were on a buffalo kill this morning, but we just wanted to come to the dam first to start off at the water body just to see. And look at that. It is so full. We found them. I'm overjoyed. The Talamati breakaway pride. And I don't see the S8 male, who's the male that is normally with this pride. I don't see him, but he could possibly be here. They seem to have moved on from the kill side. Got a few vultures up in the air, but nothing major. And I also couldn't see any hyenas, which I was hoping for. So it looks like they've just finished. It was a small buffalo, just left. And then now they're coming over here to groom. Ah, oh, he's gone flat. <laughs> We've just had the loveliest scene of the S8 male walk in and all the little ones, all the youngsters get up to greet him. There was lots of hugs and cuddles going on, but naturally he has just gone flat now, which is not ideal. There's a lot of warmth in that sort of interaction. It's really nice to see, especially with the big males, because they are the ones responsible for infanticide. They do have that violent element to them but then when you see them with cubs that are their own or they believe to be their own then it's a very warm lovely interaction this grass seed has got the most fantastic and phenomenal ability to use water to distribute the seed now how olaf does it work okay now there if i pull that out there is the ore i was talking about before and inside my fingers is the seed itself. Okay, so now this is a grass that's able to move into an area that has got open surface where the soil is exposed and the seed will land on the ground. The rain will come and the rain will rehydrate this corkscrew like a seed pod and it will actually burrow this into the floor. I don't think it's gonna work today Olaf, I'm going to lick this and then put it on my hand, but I think the wind is going to cheat with us today. So I'm going to try and just block it with my body like that. Okay, so I'm going to saturate this with, with water. I'm going to put it on my hand. And let's see if we can see what happens to... Oh, it's working. Can you see it, Olaf? Okay. So this plant is using dehydration and water to corkscrew the seed into the floor. We've got something very interesting here. I wish I could take the credit for this, but uh, it was actually Rian. He thought it was a bird initially when I was reversing and actually trying to get back to the road. And he said, no, no, there's something there. And uh, it wasn't close by. And we drove up to this tree over here and we found a tree frog. Sorry, let me turn that down. Beautiful tree frog just sitting in this, uh, what tree is this? Ooh, sweet thorn, yes, that's the one. Oh, yes, yeah, this is sweet thorn. Yeah, that's it, Acacia or Vichelia Karoo, much like the ones at the Amakala Game Reserve. So it's an, a nice uh, nice little spot for this guy. The water's not far here. And then also, um, he's in a nice piece of shade, and he's also well, well protected from the... Um, predators that might go after him because he's in a thorn tree so a great little place to be and i was actually just going through the differences between toads and frogs and uh, and those are toads have got a lot more warts on the body whereas frogs are very streamlined and then uh, frogs are more jumpers they they jump a much longer distance than what a toad does a toad is more of a, a short distance hopper and of course toads are very um, amphibious so they spend quite a bit of time on land as well or terrestrial, and then uh, tree frogs spend most of their days actually in the water. Oh, I see the bookie. Oh, really? I think it's a yala. Yeah. Oh, it's a 
This is so cool. This might be the first new I'm showing you this whole month. They're coming straight at us. This is amazing. Oh, there's even some males. Ooh. So they're walking straight into the sun. I don't know if they realize how close we are. So we're just staying nice and still. They've approached to within less than 10 meters of us now. Sarah, the Nyalas are definitely photobombing us. They said, hello girl, have you spotted us yet? Maybe she's not worried about us. It's unusual. They should definitely hear us and smell us, but maybe the shape of the vehicle, because they're looking into the sun, just looks like one solid block and they can't really tell where the humans are. Hello gorgeous ladies, we're looking so good. Wow, look at those coats. Super red, super glossy, bright white stripes. They are in exceptional condition. You never say we're in a drought looking at the greenery and looking at the condition of these antelopes. The skies are looking really dramatic on our side. This is the sunset. The sun still sets. We just don't always see it. And you've got peach and pink and lemon and really dark purple, lavender. There's all sorts of colors in the sky right now. Do I think rain is coming? Yes, I absolutely do. And this is the cue, this is the environmental cue for many organisms to either wake up or to start to go into hiding and go into burrows and holes and termite mounds. This is it. 